Now, as a transgender man, Freddie McConnell feared he'd never be able to give birth to his own child. But with the help of a sperm donor, Freddie's dreams of becoming a parent finally came true when he fell pregnant in 2017. Oh, it's a special moment for any parent. Freddie joins us now with his mum, Esme. Welcome to both of you. This is a, a deeply personal documentary, allowing the cameras to come in and film all of this time um, with you. What made you want to open the doors and let them in? Well, I think, I guess, a lot of people probably feel like they've heard a lot about trans people over the last few years. Right. It sometimes feels like we're just constantly in the headlines, but at the same time, I felt that as a journalist, as well as a trans man, there was a real lack of hearing from trans people. Mm -hmm. You often hear about us, but you actually almost never hear from us. Right. So I just thought this would be a great opportunity to share my experience. And um, it's an experience that on the one hand might seem strange and uh, confusing at first, but actually when you see the film, I think you'll realize that it's an experience that has a lot of um, things about it love, family, the desire to have a family, all these things that are so universal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Explain Seahorse. <laughs> so, Seahorse is a, a sort of label or a, a badge of honour that someone like me might wear. It's a, it's a word that's used within this small community that we have of trans men and non-binary people that give birth to their own babies. Mm -hmm. um, in nature, seahorses, the male seahorse carries and gives birth to, the, to their young. So, yeah, that's what that's about. So, for you, I mean, despite sort of always feeling uncomfortable in your own skin, you didn't transition mm. until around about two, you were 25, and that's when you started early, to, to take the... Was it earlier than that? Early 20s. Early it's, 20s. It's such a long process. You have to wait so long. It's kind of hard. You kind of lose the starting point after a certain time. But there is that moment then when you are taking the testosterone that you are warned at that time that mm. by doing that to your body that you may not be able to, to carry a child. Mm. Uh, for obvious reasons, the effect that that has on you. Did you did you think about that at the time? Or did you think, oh, one day I might want to be a parent? Mm. Well, I have to pull you up because really it, it might seem obvious, and I think that's where the, the advice comes from, yeah. that the, the sort of fertility issues, but actually there is no medical evidence to suggest that testosterone does permanently affect one's right, fertility. Okay. And trans men like me are demonstrating this with the help of supportive doctors and endocrinologists and have been doing so for decades. Mm. Um, so I was very lucky. I was given that warning and now I know that I shouldn't have been right. and other people like me shouldn't be or we at least should be having a bigger, more holistic conversation about it, taking into account the fact that someone might, like me might want to carry their own child because it's actually a perfectly safe yeah. uh, and pragmatic mm. or wonderful thing to do, depending on your own desires and what you, how you want to start your family. And as a mum, how did you feel? Well, um, uh, I've always been alongside Freddie, supporting him. Um, and when he told me he was trans, I, my first, one of my first thoughts was, well, I'm not going to have any grandchildren from Freddie, which made me sad. Um, and then years later, when Freddie started talking about wanting to have children and considered all the options, and then it, it just seemed to make sense, you know. Why wouldn't you, if you could um, carry your own child? So much more simple and straightforward, but mm. also really brave for him to do that because of all of the people out there potentially, you know, making a judgment on him. And, you know, so, you know, I've, I've always been with him alongside supporting him and feeling really proud and proud of him. You always wanted to be that person, that person who said, I'm, I'm here and it's OK. Yeah, of course, you know. I'm, Many um, parents wouldn't be. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I, I can't understand that. That's not my, um, how I feel, you know. I've, I support all my children and, you know, I'm really proud of Freddie uh, not only carrying his own child and, and having uh, his own baby, but also wanting to share it with the world and tell yeah. his story. So amazingly brave and strong and exciting to be able to share it with the world and tell people, you know, Mm -hmm. This is a thing that can happen. It's perfectly normal, you know. Mm. So how did you find it? I mean, pregnancy <laughs> can be difficult. Yeah. What was the process like for you? Yeah, it was really difficult. Yeah. Um, before I went, before I sort of started, you know, this journey myself, I had tried to find as many stories from other trans men of how they found it and some, and it really, the full range of experiences from finding it really difficult like I did, but for different reasons, or finding it amazing and empowering. Mm. And um, so I just didn't know what to expect. And actually, yeah, I did find um, coming off hormone therapy incredibly hard. And mm. um, the pregnancy itself, 
was a mix, you know. Um, I actually found it really helpful when I could start feeling kicks and uh, start seeing a bump because it grounded me and reminded me why I was doing what I was doing yeah. and gave me this sense of, yeah, that's, that's your job. You just got to, you know, stay safe and, and get to the end of this and then and now, you know, I feel like myself again. Yeah. Was, it, was yeah. it difficult um, psychologically um, because you are very comfortable in your own skin. Mm. You, you've known for a long time who you wanted to be, mm. who you should be. But carrying a baby is a without. You know, there's nothing you can do about the fact that it is a nod to a life before. Mm. Um, it's hard because there is no way for someone like me to do that without being erased um, in the medical settings or in the social settings around pregnancy and birth. And I understand that because it is so unusual, just statistically speaking. But if there was a way that someone like me could go through this experience and be gendered correctly yeah. on forms and by midwives, and I was lucky because I generally was, um, or if I could attend uh, antenatal classes or pregnancy yoga and just know that I would be welcomed and, and you know, safe. And again, you know, not to totally change those things to accommodate someone like me, but just to make a little bit of extra space, mm. then it would have been so much easier psychologically mm. to, to do that. Well, the law needs to catch up anyway, doesn't it? And the law mm. needs to catch up with a birth certificate. Mm. Uh, so, and that has, that has been an issue. Mm. Yeah. So just explain, just explain, because um, how are you... Uh, when, it, when you look at the birth certificate, what, what does it say? So someone in my position at the moment, as it stands, would be registered as the mother. Right. Um, yeah. And so obviously that doesn't reflect your reality. So you must be looking at this game. Well, that's not, that's not what it, that's not what it is. That's mm. not my life. That's not how I live my life. Yeah, absolutely. And and there are there are actually lots of ways in which the law hasn't kept up with society and different kinds of families and the the ways families are created now. So actually, there's lots of struggles for various LGBTQ plus mm. families and parents. Um, and yeah, that's uh, it. Does need to change, and it's yeah. Well, <laughs> it's that's a struggle. one of the reasons that you're you're doing what you're mm. doing, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, to bring attention to it. Yeah. But how's life as a dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I absolutely love it. I, I'm lucky. You know, I, I just had always had the sense that I was meant to be a parent and have yeah. kids, and um, not necessarily through pregnancy. But you know, I, I, I'm I'm glad that, that I did choose that choose that route. I'm lucky. Oh, I'm glad that that sense I had that this is something I'm meant to do seems to have been borne out in the fact that I just love it. It's my job, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, more, more children, more children more in the future. Who knows? <laughs> what, what, what are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, I think maybe there's room for at least one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in um, and telling us about it. Um, the documentary that we've been talking about is Seahorse, The Dad Who Gave Birth, and that's on BBC Two at nine o'clock uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.